Hello! Welcome to Prison Blade Gaming. My name is Hawk, a.k.a. the true winner of this latest election. And welcome <laughs> to Tyranny of Dragons, Episode 9. Uh, the party goes to Waterdeep and burns things. In this episode, the party is going to Waterdeep to burn things. I assume. I mean, I am sure. the DM. I can, I can make them do it. <laughs> Don't tempt me to use fireball. Anyway, joining us today, we have uh, Fish. Hello. Nate. Sup. Uh, Mo Morgan. Hello. Uh, Mist. Hi. And Sarah. 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 Hey. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hey. And joining us is a new player named Stony. Prepare to be seduced violently. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> On this episode of Criminal Minds. <laughs> <laughs> On this episode of Criminal Minds, we will see who killed Stony. Oh, come on now. <laughs> It's because I'm an orc, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We are not speciesist here. This is Prison Blade Gaming. We are all inclusive, so we will accuse everybody of the same thing. Yes. This has uh, suddenly become an Among Us game. Yay. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this is Prison Blade Gaming, so we uh, we stereotype everyone. Uh, we have a, uh, <laughs> I don't we have know about a, uh, that. We have a drunk human cleric. He's kind of an asshole, but he likes the ladies, as all humans do. We have <laughs> two dragonborn, who are probably way too into their roles in the party. <laughs> Wait, what? Who we have you a, say that? Uh, we have a halfling who is good at thievery, because of Typical. course she is. Uh, we have an orc who likes to hit things. Wow! <laughs> and we have... And we have... And then we have Sarah's character, who's... She goes pew, 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 pew. She's, she's a warlock, and therefore a uh, laser turret. Just use Eldritch. Just use Eldritch. Just use Eldritch. Also, Hawk, <laughs> I, I, I sent a picture in uh, the VDDM. I noticed. It's cute. It totally needs to happen eventually. Agreed. All right. But all that bullshit aside, last time our party made the long trek from Baldur's Gate all the way up to Waterdeep. And now they have arrived in the massive city. The sprawling, wondrous land of fucking... What is this world called again? <laughs> Favorite oh, I thought it was the land of fucking. <laughs> I, 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 I got really I, excited for a minute. I can't believe I blinked <laughs> on <Wow>. that. Wow. <laughs> <Ford Cove. laughs> maybe maybe going to do some intro about how Waterdeep is a horrible place full of thieving backstabbers and sewers. Uh, yeah, and uh, illithids in the sewers. And uh, there's also a beholder who likes his pet goldfish there. <laughs> oh, that is I, that is a canon event in every story. Yep. And I wanted in every game that we've got that I've gone to Waterdeep to just fuck with Xanathar and steal his goldfish. <laughs> oh, why? That's his friend. I have That's never played weird. this campaign no, before. It, no, no, no. It's not friend. actually his friend. No. It is just a random fish every time. Yeah, it's it's just a random ass goldfish. Uh -huh. There's actually a guy in his employ that is in charge with replacing the fish every time it dies before Xanathar sees it, so that Xanathar doesn't burn down the city. Yep. So it's a friend. Yeah, a friend of a fish friend. And y'all just are okay, friends. fine. Not food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell that to the baby dragons. 
<laughs> I will tell that to the baby dragon. I speak draconic. Did we we all speak draconic. Except, Except for, for the halfling. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I don't know uh, why I yes. speak draconic, but I do. Yes, so, last session, the babies hatched. Yep. Oh. Nora is hey, a baby. proud dragon. Dra yeah, Nora is a tra proud dragon mama of one hatchling so far. Yes, Ilbis rambled on and cooked up some acid for me. <laughs> I forgot I named him that. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an no episode of Breaking Bad? Yes, it, do you mean the actual damage type or the party drug? Uh, I'm, going I, I'm pretty sure it's both. <laughs> it was I'm pretty a barrel... sure this type is both. Hell it yeah! Bar... <laughs> it was a barrel of boiling acid for the baby egg to hatch in. And I'm pretty sure the fumes could be used as a psychedelic. Oh shit. Plan for the night. Alright. As the party makes their way into Waterdeep that afternoon... Many, like the majority of the caravan owners and the people running the different, the different uh, carts and businesses, you know, ramble off to do their own thing. Your employer, in particular, just flicks some gold coins to you, and then you. heads off to wherever it is he's going. And with that, the party is forced to leave the drakes in a stable outside the city by the city guards however as you are, as you are taken to the stable and you put them up yeah you realize that this stable is a lot more safe than the one that you saw at Baldur's Gate they aren't they aren't getting stolen or taken or kidnapped like okay there's actual guards at these stables and as you enter to find a shack for them, uh, you see why. There are multiple exotic mounts in it. You see a couple of griffins. You see a pegasi. An actual pegasi, Sarah. You see a... <laughs> you see a large elephant eating a massive stack of hay. Uh, that over there. That's a goddamn unicorn. And so on and so forth. Sorry. I can't contain the glee. We couldn't hear the squee, so it's okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, it was too high pitched for your mic to pick up. We just we'll just imagine it was adorable and not horrific. <laughs> As the group I forget how much the guy promised to pay y'all. What? Oh, in my notes. I'll pull it up for you. You could keep going. Actually, I can probably just pull it here. Oh, no. Ow. Bad mic. Stop. Uh, you know. Nora will make sure that the drakes are comfy and are not tempted to go after the other mounts. No. Uh, 20 gold each. So, yeah. Okay. Is likely spending most of that to keep the drakes from wanting to eat the other mounts. Oh, the drakes are happy to just sit there with some uh, raw meat that the stable owners provide. But it oh, is... they provided meat? Okay. Well, yeah, griffins. Oh, true. But they're also, like, the actual lodging for them per day is half a gold, so. Damn, okay. As the party makes their way into the massive city of Waterdeep itself, the buildings sprawl around you. A Victorian London-esque scene stretching out before you with multiple streets, alleyways, and people of all kinds wandering around, going about their daily business. And here is where we do some role-playing. Okay. As the party is exploring town... Fish, what is something interesting that Bennett sees? Oh no, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, <laughs> something interesting that Bennett would see. Um, yeah. And the rest of you think of that as well, because I'm going to come to each of you with this question. Either a brothel or a church of, of Helm. 
Whichever, if you want me to like, wow, can I roll a d2. Sure, <laughs> one is brothel, two is, is the church of helm. Sure, our church holy, of helm, it is our holy man, everyone. Uh, I mean, at least he has his so you find a brothel of helm. <laughs> Fun fact I ran one of those once. Honestly, ah. saying, you need one of these. This is kind of cool. Uh, you come across a brothel pretty quickly. It's yeah, it's a brothel. I mean, you walk in, it's uh, the smell of spices and perfumes fill the air. As you enter, you uh, see uh, a tiefling with small horns jutting out of his forehead and the most pimpin' hat you've ever seen approach you. Before he says anything to me, I'm going to say a quick prayer to Helm and be like, well, hopefully this is the right thing. And proceed. Well, howdy there, Mr. Man. What you in the mood for today? Well, first things first, that hat. Where'd you get that hat? Down in the market district, my friend. It's pretty snazzy looking. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, if you head down to the market district, go down uh, a, sh a shadow row, talk to Slim, and tell him that Easy Pete sent you. Oh my god, no. Now, is this for me to get more girls? Or is this <laughs> just for the hat? Oh, this is just for the hat. What's your prices? What? What was the question? I said, what's your prices? Oh. Well, that depends on the kind of girl you want, my friend. You know, I would prefer her clean and that'll cost extra um, that's fine um you know I, I think that just another human would be great right now you know what actually you got any works <laughs> he steps over to you and wraps his arm around your shoulder my friend you are in luck because we do happen to have an orc Two, as a matter of fact. Oh no. Two, you say? He, oh no. He pulls you into a. Uh, he pulls you into a back room, tossing aside bead curtains as he does, and you look out over to see a large selection of women, all of whom look over with the expression of a gas station attendant who has absolutely who is absolutely done with your shit oh so they're not happy though they have the customer service face on but you can tell in their let in their eyes they are they are tired they are done a smile that says welcome sir how can we help you i they please kill me now their smile says, welcome, we're here to pleasure you. Their eyes say, I will bite your dick off if you wrong us. <laughs> I, I gained that from them. I, I didn't make an insight check or, check or nothing. No, oh, yeah, no, you, you can tell. Just Your passive perception was enough. Many of them look less pissed off like or upset or tired than the others. Of the orcs. Uh, both of the orcs are looking at you like... There is no way in hell this human boy can ever satisfy us. If he picks us, we'll just get it over with. <laughs> so, out of character, do hey. I make performance checks here? <laughs> hey, 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 just, just remember... <laughs> Just, just, just a quick word. If you think orcs are bad, wait till you see centaurs. <laughs> oh, Them some picky wow. bitches. <clears throat> Love this opening. 
This is great. I'll, I'll say to Easy Pete, I'll say to Easy Pete and be like, you know, I'm just just looking for a nice strong woman to just take straight advantage of me. Which one you think will do that? He looks at the two of them. Then gestures at one to come over. She gets up, walks over. This here is Susie. She'll take good care of you, my friend. She, okay. uh, she steps over, smiles at you, and like, and then you realize just how tall she is. Easily eight feet. Nothing but muscle. I think this is exactly what I wanted. Looking up to, looking up at her. <laughs> You're. This is great. <laughs> and this I episode. Go. In this episode of Frozen Blade Gaming, we dive into the deep sexual psyche of uh, Bennett the Holy <laughs> Man. Yeah, I don't know what kind of game I joined right here, but I think I like it. <laughs> Bennett has tried flirting with other girls. It's not working. He's a little desperate. I'm going to go in, and right before the deed is done, I'm casting Guidance on myself. <laughs> Oh, holy helm, pr praise be upon thee. Give thy wisdom to your most holy of servants. How do I so fuck I, this bitch? So that I can smash this bitch's ass. So the thing is, is it's concentration. So if she hurts me, I have to uh, Lord, make it concentrate. I wish to tap this hole like a magic card. Give me your holy <laughs> guidance. <laughs> I didn't realize he was that desperate. God damn! Good night, internet. You're drunk. I'll say to to Easy Pete. How much? He just he just laughs and pats you on the back. Yes, Morgan. <laughs> Holy mega nut! That'll be three gold for the evening. All right, I'll give him three. And <laughs> done. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to walk into the room and start just, like, taking off my half plate as we're quickly going to, We're going to cut to black there. Roll performance, <laughs> Thank <please>. you. <laughs> this is a PG-13 stream. Thank you very much. Oh, That's no, okay. it isn't. Let's be honest here, Hawk. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling my D4. That... You performed adequately. D4. Then roll your D4. Batman. Was he supposed to do that with advantage? Because he did that with advantage. Um, always rolls it. I don't know we why. always roll with advantage. Just look at the first number. Oh, you can actually swap that off if you click on the gear in the character sheet. Yeah, but then people forget to roll with advantage. Disadvantage. All right. All right. Thirteen. Final number. Yeah, you performed adequately. So, while you're porking the orc... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can't breathe. Yes. <laughs> what would, uh... What would Normog be seeing that catches her interest in Waterdeep? Um... There could be several things that are catching her interest... Uh, pretty much any, any form of, like, act of, like, well, drakes, they're interesting to her. Mostly, though, she'd probably just be looking around and just kind of in awe at the, at the city, not really having been in a big city like this before. All right. Because I, I, I do want to remind you, Baldur's Gate was the first city that wasn't being attacked that she's been to that you know yeah, was as you uh as you approach one of the local taverns you notice standing outside is an is uh what looks like an orc hunter large bow on his back strung over his chest uh simple looking leather armor the uh Rib bones of some animal 
draped in a necklace across his chest. And a uh, large and a large wolf sitting by his side, sniffing at people who come by. Uh, okay then. The orc glances at you, noticing you staring, and raises a brow. Right, I'm not for sale. Unless you're hiring me for work. I'll be honest, sir. I was more intrigued by a wolf. Beautiful creature. He's an asshole. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's not true. No, that's, yes, he is. Uh, that's pretty much true. He's a dick. His name's Wallace. No, we'll just kind of crouch, crouch down and hold out a hand for, to Wallace. Wallace immediately, but gently, bites you. Not a <laughs> chomp bite, but more of a <laughs> bite. We'll just sort of scratch behind Wallace's ear. <laughs> oh, look at that. He likes you. He just wants to play. That's all. <laughs> wants to play my green area arse. <laughs> oh. Oh, I've played with him. Got the scars to prove it. <laughs> he pulls back his sleeve to show that he has multiple bite scars on his arms. Ooh. Those are pretty nasty. Anyway. You're welcome to hire us, but you have to talk to the boss first. Name's Tosk, leader of the war band of Ligma. Yeah, that's me. I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Eventually, I will achieve the title of Khan, and the name will become even funnier. Inside, Nora can see a group of other orc warriors and barbarians enjoying drinks and a large meal. One of them in particular is huge. Stony, would you like to introduce your character? Here's the thing. By orc standards, they're actually kind of short. They're only six feet tall. Okay, But so he is a wall of solid muscle. So, it's actually the guy that the massive orc is wrestling. Yes. <laughs> as you see a far, as you see a rather small orc proceed to pick up and throw a much larger one right out the door. As the uh, howdy, as the other orc gets stumbles to his feet, cursing and swearing in orcish. He stumbles over, only to be stopped by a... Did I name the hunter? You did, oh. but you didn't give it. Only to be stopped by the hunter. He grumbles some more, pulls out his copper coin, and slams it into the hunter's palm before going back in. The hunter just pockets it and grins. And what was that all about? I had a bet on him. He lost. <laughs> All right, then. The folks do seem interesting. Uh, I assume it doesn't char cost anything to go in. No, 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 not at all. All right. She'll just walk in. Stony, what you see 
is a crimson scaled dragonborn wearing flowing robes. Hmm. And two different colored eyes. So, Scaly One, what brings you here? Mm. Exploration, a journey, and a job. Interesting. The job has sort of been completed. The journey, n nowhere near it. Mm. And exploration, it's never done. Well, if you're looking for help, me and my boys here are kind of between jobs at the moment. The, uh, the guards at the last place we visited ta didn't take too kindly to our fiery solution to their problem. So... <laughs> I like to burn uh, things. Oh, I think you and I would get along swimmingly then. Wonderful. She says, just making a small mode of fire in her hand. Doing like a coin roll with, with the little flame. Is it just disappears? Wonderful. So, do you intend to pay us regularly, or will we be taking a share of the loot? Well, for right now, I need to see uh, what our employers are intending to do. Fair enough. But I will come find you when I f figure that out. Alright. Me and the boys should be here the rest of the night. Though, if for some reason I'm passed out, do just ask Steve. He he's oh. the one by the door. Alright. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Nora. Nice to meet you, Nora. Oh, and word of advice, don't pet the warg. Oh, he's a he's a darling. I've already pet him. No, no, he I I've talked to him. He's an asshole. <laughs> and yet he seemed perfectly fine letting me scratch behind his ears. Well that means you're probably also an asshole. <laughs> I have no clue what you are uh, insinuating, but all right then. I'm just messing with you. He likes the ladies. Just, you know, be careful. He does eat people, you know. I know. Most battle companions do. As do my five. Well, well now six. six, six You're six then... what? Five drakes, one black dragon. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, it will be interesting working with you, probably. Agreed. T try not to get melted before we next meet. <laughs> oh, I doubt I will. Either way. Uh, I will be off. Pleasure meeting you all. Enjoy your rough housing. All of them cheer and toast you. And then immediately and... start wrestling again. And then points to the one that got tossed out the door. Uh, next time, try planting your feet a bit more. He got the, he got the lower leverage on you. Unironically good advice for small fighters. <laughs> for against small fighters. And with that, we will turn over to Morgan. Hi. What is something interesting that Astos would see out here? Places to fight in gladiator type things. Punch, I, kill, attack. <laughs> I'm imagining Astos was just traveling with Nora and just comes into the tavern as she's leaving. Don't be hot to it. Come on. Actually. <laughs> Nora would find a small fight club. Oh, hell yeah. In the southern parts of Waterdeep. As you enter, 
registration is quick, relatively painless, and basically only took a signature. Oh no. Excellent. Love that. As you enter the arena, I honestly don't know how to roleplay this, so just roll performance. Cool. I can do that. Let's see. Rolls a neg one somehow. <laughs> and yeah. We'll see how much gold you get. Fifteen. Not bad. Woo! You attack kill. You fight. You fight. You fight and do a gladi gladiatorial show for the folks in the arena who are watching, expecting bloodshed and combat. It's a great time. You fight a tamed lion pretending to try and bite you. You fight against a couple more warriors who are just, you know, there to put on a show with you. It's all very it's all staged and all very simple, but god damn, you make it look good. At the end of the evening, you've made about you've made let me roll here. You've managed to make nine gold. Nice. Missed your mic is not picking you up at all. At all? Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Like you have to talk like right into it. Work my mic. There. Hey, I can come over there and fix it during the intermission. All right, and we will. While I'm fixing that. Sarah, what's something interesting that you see? She's Arifin would definitely go to the magic shopping district area and after picking out another new dress that wasn't ruined in the last combat session, um, she'd find either a um, alchemist shop or um, some kind of like magic item shop because she needs a changed out her arcane focus. Her staff broke in the last fight, so now she's got to use something else to channel her energy through. Oh, yep. okay. And she's always looking for, like, little magical ingredients or poisons, alchemical stuff for Violet. Keeping her eyes peeled. Alright. Thanks, Bree. What? She's going on a shopping spree. Oh, yep. I just got paid, bitch. I want to get some shit. <laughs> you find you find a, a few good alchemical reagents to give to Violet. You get a new dress pretty cheaply. I mean, all of this costs you about, you know, your entire salary from that trip. Yeah, I've still got about 30 gold left over. But at the end, you glance to the right as you turn a corner. And you notice a, a small shop. A uh, purple. What's the word? Like the fucking. Well, what you see is a large purple cylindrical object. That oh wait no wrong game. <laughs> it, you see a shop with a purple awning over it. Ah. At the top of the awning, you see Madame Mrs. Malcata. Magical mysteries. All right, everyone <laughs> just kind of perk a brow and go over and look at it. As you enter, you find that the entire shop is nothing but knickknacks. It's just weird-looking <sighs> shit from across the world. However, Miss Madam Mrs. Malkata steps out. And immediately your interest is piqued. Because you can tell there is something not quite right about her. As she shuffles forward, she's very old. Impossibly so. And while she looks human, you can tell by the gleam in her eyes that there's more, much more to her. She smiles up at you. Hello there, dear me. How can I help you today? Uh, unfortunately, my magic staff broke during the fight, so I'm 
in the market for something new to focus my magic through. I was seeing if you could help me out. Oh, of course, of course. We have many magical foci. Over here. She steps over to a small corner where you see wands, staves, books, sigils of all sorts. As you were looking them over, you realize that she, like, there's a measuring tape floating next to you, measuring your arm. Mm. May I see your hand, please? She'll extend her, whichever one's being measured. And she takes your right hand and gently traces it along the lines on your palm. Oh, yes. I see. I see. I see you will die after you're th giving birth to your third child. Oh, how tragic. <laughs> and then she suddenly whips out a needle, plunges it into your, into your finger, and swipes up the blood before releasing you. And then she tastes your, the blood. Oh, yes. Oh, I see. Hmm. Just my type. Hmm, strawberry delivered. Uh, Nate, <laughs> please. Repeat after me. Tastes Burn like... the witch! Burn the witch! <laughs> Tastes like syrup. You might have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh... She then pulls out a small wand and hands it to you. Here you are, dearest. This one should suit you nicely. Okay, I'll take a gander. Kind you... of just... As you take the wand into your hand, it you you feel an immediate connection to it as your arcane magic starts to resonate with the core of the wand. Ooh. All right. She grins. <laughs> You have quite a destiny ahead of you, don't you? I'd like to think I make my own, but never hurts to have a good direction to be pointed towards. Oh, trust me. No one makes their own destiny these days. But if you'd like, to give you a hint. Oh no! Roll insight. <laughs> uh, go right ahead. Give it a shot. Oh, that's that's really bad. <laughs> it sounds completely legit and super cool. Oh, tell me, oh wisest of ladies, <laughs> please. She grins and steps over to a small table in the other corner with a crystal ball sitting on it. Come, have a seat, my dear. And let's see what your future might hold. <laughs> Eagerly sits, tucking the wand into her knapsack back. <laughs> she, uh, she she whips a small purple silk handkerchief out and swishes it over the crystal ball. As it passes over, in its place is a small wooden box. She pops it open, revealing something wrapped up in more purple silk, which she pulls out to reveal a deck of cards. Yay. Yay. All the yay. deck through its cards your fate you will see draw as many as you want for your destiny she'll grab one from the top one from the bottom and ask for one from the middle <laughs> you know that's not how a deck of many things works no, I'm just being flavorful. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. One from three, the top. three from one. One from the 
top, one from the bottom, one from the middle. Let's see what happens. <laughs> she places the three cards in on the table in front of her. Oh, that one's interesting. The first card she pulls looks like a traditional, like, solitaire king card. Except it's a portrait of you. But mixed into this portrait on the halfway point is another version of you facing the opposite direction with completely different colors. Isn't that one interesting? You'll face someone quite similar to yourself. But they will be directly opposed to you. She grins and flips over the second card. A picture of you surrounded by a flaming pentagram with a circle through it. Dark, arcane fire will purge through your body. You will gain power. But at what cost, I wonder? And she flips the final card. A picture of you facing away from the card's viewpoint with a glorious golden crown surrounded by jewelry and gems and coins. <gasps> a horde. A horde of your very own. <laughs> a very, very interesting. Poised. Very interesting indeed. Well, I've always dreamed of one, but how does it say how I, how I get there? No. The deck can only show you snapshots of your destiny. How you get there is up to you. Or is it? I've heard many tales to the contrary. <laughs> oh, she'll again she'll thank the madam leave at least three gold on the table and be like I've got to go tell my friends about this and just run out the door <laughs> as you do as you walk out you get about half a block away before you forget what you were doing Looking back, the store is gone. And <laughs> knew it. <laughs> Weird. Huh. Uh. All right. Uh. There. Arafin would kind of be befuddled for a moment and then um, probably go for, to the tavern for a drink thinking she's just dehydrated. <laughs> As you enter the tavern you, uh, you would meet up with Astos who has just finished their latest set in the, in the arena. And we will turn this over to Mist. So, Mist, what's something interesting in town that you see? Well, considering Buttertub is from Watergate, she has her own priorities. Because this road is not an orphan. It's gonna go home. Fair enough. Only. As you approach your old home, you see, uh, as you walk, as you walk through the gates and up the, uh, up the nice mansion walkway, you see your old family butler. Uh, uh, Quimbley. Quimbley looks at you. <gasps> and he bows. You are home. Your parents have been quite concerned about you. Completely different than a picture for a buttercup. 
Well, roll with it. Do you get the money? Or from money? Alright, well, where is she from then? You tell me. That doesn't necessarily mean they didn't have friends who were worried. True. The they go to Sam Brothel with the orcs and. Uh, no. And it's just like a small, like, apartment. Okay. As you approach the apartment, you, uh. You would come up, knock on the doors, and you'd hear, just a minute, from inside. Eventually. The person who opens the door is Buttercup's mother, who opens the door, sees her, and immediately drops what drops the uh, drops the little plate of food she was carrying and hugs Buttercup. Where have you been? What an adventure! She was gonna leave. No, no! Where have you been? Where did your adventure take you? you? Come in, come in! And she excitedly rushes Buttercup inside. And uh, within the next few minutes, you have uh, tea, biscuits, a ham and cheese sandwich, a salad, a cooked chicken. <laughs> And an apple. <laughs> Your Buttercup's mother sits down in front of her and like starts starts buttering a biscuit as she looks at Buttercup expectantly. Tell me, tell me, where have you been? What have you seen? Onthar? Right? Uh, Onthar? Yes, I remember him. I mean, of course. We've been doing some investigating and venturing and taking down some uh, the evil people. Oh. Well, you're being safe, right? Yes. Panion's here. He, uh... And when you get the right word, you go, well, I had to come home first. Right. She smiles at you. As we are going to take a brief intermission. So I can uh, fix your mic. Because it's not picking you up properly. I got deck of many things. Woot. God damn it. <laughs> Why does it have to be the deck of many things? <laughs> because I love it, and Hawk uses it in every campaign. Burn the witch. I fucking hate that deck hey, of things. Hey, at least I didn't get cast into Don John, and y'all just have to look for me in a, some kind of ethereal plane or some shit. So, I, I, I am good. The, I, I, I fucking hate the deck. I'm That's sorry. No, we we can hear you very faintly. Hmm? I could hear Hawk and Mist a moment ago. Testing, testing. The... Testing, testing. Do you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. No problems at all? No, you're testing, coming in testing. really well. Sarah says it sounds really good. Okay. Yeah, when, when Hawk says testing, it what? sounds a little soft, but we can make it out. When Mist, when you're talking directly towards the mic, you, you sound really good. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Carrie, go ahead and continue. Can I go and explain like the basically the past few sessions of charity? All right. 
no, telling stories and sharing stories with her mom because you know what? Halflings like stories. She listens to you for a good couple hours before finally. Oh, but she does leave out anything involving the harbors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eventually, you. Uh, well, she says, well, it's obvious she would happily keep you there for another four or five hours telling more and more stories. You eventually recognize that you need to get back to the party. Yeah. I'll be back again, Mom. She smiles. Be careful out there, dear. I care about you, you know. Just be safe, okay? For your mom. Oh, didn't catch that, huh? Of course. And she'll give her mom a little, like, pick in the cheek. Oh. Well, as Buttercup leaves home again, Honestly, just abandoning her, her care, her mother like that. Yeah, it's gonna be sad when they die horrifically. Mm. It's gonna be so depressing when they uh, the inevitable death happens. Well, then I'm gonna be no rogue. <laughs> 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 Good night, yeah. Buttercup. Sleep well. Most likely kill you in the morning. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And the first suspect is... <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was actually Colonel Mustard with the lead pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. In, Every time. In the study. Why yes. didn't we expect it sooner? She never goes to the study. It was Quimbley. Wait. The butler did it? <laughs> Except the deck and kill someone with one of the rooms. <laughs> Alright. Happened three different times. As the party is gathering back together to sleep at one of the inns before trying to figure out you know, where the cult is going, as they enter, they hear a loud roar from inside. Only two or three of you are actually here at this point. Let's say Buttercup, Arafin, and Bennett. You see a lot of normal civilians rushing out of the tavern looking terrified. And as you enter to see what the fuck's going on, you see quite a few more looking, you know, like, whoa, what the shit? And then you see what they're looking at. A group of the cultists are surrounding a black half-dragon who has slammed a table in half. You can see maps and other paperwork like strewn across the place that some of the cult members are picking up. They were supposed to be here five days ago! What the hell is taking them so long? Like I told you, ma'am, everyone near Salt Marsh has been held up. I don't care what's holding them up! We needed that coral! I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't control the Sahagin. <sighs> she hisses and sputters acid out onto the broken table, which dissolves even more. Hmm. Arifin sees the site, just kind of puts her hand to her chance, like, this is a problem tunity. <laughs> Do you have a plan? A problem tunity. 
<laughs> Hawk, catch your breath. Don't die. <laughs> she would explain to her friends that what you're you're seeing is someone having a problem, but what you're going to discover is this is an opportunity for yourself to gain something. <laughs> problem. <laughs> Doesn't really roll off the tongue, but hmm. maybe what's that? That's what that orc girl thought earlier. Oh, well, we don't, we don't know that yet. Oh, wait, no, hang on. Are you saying that in character? Yeah, that was in character. I, I'll yeah. just say, maybe that's yep. what the orc girl was thinking earlier. What orc? Well, maybe I'll tell you over at uh, Mead or something. Yeah. Okay. J just to fuck with you, I'm gonna pretend I was the orc girl when we meet the party. <laughs> so, Arifin, what exactly do you plan here, sweetheart? Like, we're just maybe we use the information we get. I don't. Just, you tell me. If this dragon won't calm down without some form of coral. And the sea hog and are either the party that is tied up and delayed, and or the source of the problem causing the delay, then perhaps we can take care of it, big air quotes, for a nominal charge. I mean, we are mercenaries, right? I mean, uh, guards, guards, excuse me, guards. Infiltrating the cult, the cult even more than we already are. I'm down with that. But, uh... Does Ruttercup have anything to add? We should go salt marshes. Bunch of... pirates there. And it's kind of a nasty place. It's not, it's not tall nasty. They have a giant B-Rex. I've never been to Salt Marsh myself. Read a little bit about it, but never been. Y'all could roll history. I'm good at that. Let's see. Apparently so am I. Ah. The two of you would know that Salt Marsh is a small city to the direct north of the Mayor of Dead Men directly between Waterdeep and Neverwinter. Currently, Salt Marsh is in the middle of a political turmoil between Neverwinter and Waterdeep, both of whom are claiming to have, you know, dominion over that area. Because the Mayor of Dead Men is right next to it, uh, neither of them really want to send guards or people to actually enforce their rule, so they're more just deliberating between each other about what to do while Salt Marsh is basically left as a lawless city. No one gives a shit about what happens there. Sounds perfect. And as a result of this, Salt Marsh is basically a smuggler and pirate haven. Recently, like about... 30 years ago, it was run by a group of cutthroat pirates called the Sea Princes, until a group of adventurers kicked them to the curb. So. Yeah! Do with that information what you will. Well, maybe we wait until the rest of the group gets here and we talk to them. I don't think us three could do anything on our own. At this point, <laughs> at, this, at this point, the other two would arrive with a large orc band in tow. Yeah, that little dot is, that I'm pinging right now, that's where Salt Marsh is. Cool. You don't know why I started pinging that, and I'm sorry. I was just... It's okay. Eight. Salt Marsh itself would be more closer to right there. Okay. 
from what we could overhear was were the sea hogging causing the problem or they were the source the Sahagin are apparently creating a blockade around Salt Marsh that is preventing people from leaving or entering. They're, up, they're like, they're, that's what you heard. Okay. The Sahagin are sinking ships that try to leave or enter Salt Marsh's domain. It's possible to sneak through, but apparently a shipment that this black half dragon was expecting didn't come through. Hmm. Uh, Arafin can explain the situation to the rest of the party and she's looking for opinions. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go explaining everything, who who's this guy? Pointing to the orc. Name Jeff. Oh, 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 okay. Hi, I'm Tosk. I'm uh, kind of the leader of this little war band here, and uh, we're looking for work. And to to be honest, I'd rather get out of the city as soon as possible before things um explode. Oh, this sounds like a wonderful opportunity then. Uh, yes. uh, if you if you say that again, I will throw you through the wall. <laughs> I, I am saying just that most... in universe to whoever said that. Okay, Arafin would I... just make a motion to zip her lip. And I say, uh, keep an eye on you. I do have a tendency I, I, to... I, Here's the thing. I'm going to walk over. I'm going to sniff around him and say, you smell like orc. I do, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm just going to give him a... I'm just going to give him a knowing look. I think you and I are going to get along real well. Oh my... What do you mean by real yes. well? Because, to be quite frank, our introduction wasn't the best one I've ever had. By far wasn't the worst. Should have seen the, the site. Was it a cyclops that we ran into on the road? Yeah, it was a cyclops. We should have seen the cyclops we ran into. He hates everything. Shiny things. This. And I'll, like spawn my spiritual weapon and then like oh. put it away he hates oh, everything what I found that Cyclops quite amusing he was great he, he hates everything oh yeah it was I, I, I loved it uh, he hates the forest slightly less which is why he lives there but I sympathize with that I don't fully understand why you like me you haven't you don't know me. Clerics of Helm do tend to have a good standing with the orcs, so... Oh, oh you, you city folk. You can't smell things the way us natural can. And, um... Well, you look like you know how to have a fun night. I've already had my fun tonight. I know. Giggity! <laughs> oh, can I anyway. roll insight? Sure. Yes, he oh, knows wow. you had sex. He knows I had sex. He knows well, you had sex. Cool. And it felt so good. You know, oh my. Easy Pete down down there hooked me up. It was pretty good. Yeah, Excuse we we bumped into him on our way to the tavern. Um, he has a nice hat. Get gotta say, I, I kind of want it. <laughs> Maybe I the, know this guy. The hat was really cool, right? <laughs> yeah. While the boys are talking about the brothel, Arafin would hand drinks to. Hey, hey. Uh, no, we're not talking about the brothel. We're exchanging fashion tips. Okay, while you two are comparing feather sizes, 
Arafin will ask Astos and Buttercup if they're up for the side quest, as it were. We should, we should become pirates right now. I'm for it. I mean... I prefer the term high-risk uh, trader. What was that, Carrie? <laughs> Not quite sure how it's going to help us, but just if it messes up with them, I'm for it. This is an opportunity to get in good with them. Get some information. I'd be alright with that. I wonder if you only like hired for them to get here as like you no know, guards. I mean our whole contract with them is over now. It could be quite fun. Hmm. I don't actually want to help these people. I'm always for fucking shit up. Been at least a week since I punched anyone. Let's at least That's try right. and do the job correctly. If but we smash. fail, if we all fail, Tusk or Tusk and I can just punch each other. No, your, your your initial pronunciation was correct. It's an O. Ah. All right, thank you. Right. Is the, the half? Mm. I'm sorry. Go go ahead, Nora. Way. This also would be a good chance to let the new hatchling spread its wings a bit. Yes. And then the you realize one. the hatchling has been gone this entire time. Oh no. You lost a dragon. It's impressive. I want to point out Nora would not would not have left the dragon side. But the dragon would have left her side. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of hard to lose track of a dragon. I don't know. Wormlings are pretty spry. I mean, but... let, let's be real. It here. is still half the of... size of a human. Half of us can lose our phone while still talking on it. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been magic. Wait, you've lost your know. phone while talking on it? It. That. That's just an example. Yeah, okay. it, 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 the DM says the dragon is missing. We need to find the dragon. Is, yeah, am no, I that, that understanding been... that properly? I think I'm good at finding things, actually. Uh, my newest edition seems to have decided that they want to wander. Great. They're just Great. Busy. You... So what do I roll to track a dragon? All of our dice at once. Survive. He didn't run off. He's over in a barrel eating pickles. <laughs> it takes you about five minutes to track down the dragon. Who actually, who actually snuck off a while ago to just go sleep in the stables with the other drakes. Aww. Oh, thank goodness. That's one way to worry. Lose a dragon, then find it. These things are way... Bronte, Bolt, Barak, Bezik, Blitz. Have they been... Has Jet been behaving over here? She says to the drakes. They yawn. Alright. Buttercup, you want to help me get this job? She'll motion towards the cultists. Sure. You ladies mind if uh, I tag along? I'm feeling a little spry. Do some like little stretches. Sure, you <laughs> want to talk to the cultists? Be my guest. And she'll just kind of give them both hearing... a little bit of a shove towards the table. He he hearing that the table needs... Did, that the did... cultists... Sorry. I, 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 I will step forward. Alright, y'all. Let me handle this. <laughs> oh, this can only end well. Press the digitate a bag of popcorn in her hands, and she'll sit down at the nearest table and cross her legs like, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that Nora would be heading back after <laughs> confirming that Jet's okay. Yeah. 
Minotaur. All right. So I guess I'm gonna go talk to a weird cult I've never interacted with. Uh. So I guess I'll just quietly walk through the door. Yep. Then knock, like on the frame to get their attention, and then say, "Um, excuse me. It's been brought to my attention that you may be in need of certain services that I might be able to provide." Uh. Specifically with, um, moving something from somewhere else, where it's not supposed to be moved from. The black half-dragon slowly looks up. Her, her eyes gleam with green malevolence. And as she stands up, her purple robes and armor flow around her. She walks up to you looking down at you from her you know, six and a half foot height her horns gently reaching down to nearly poke your eyes in and what exactly are you offering I I'll, I'll put it simply I'm looking for gold I just want a simple payday for me and my boys to get drunk some more for a few more weeks. Uh, we're willing to do dirty work, and think of it this way. The worst case scenario, we die, you don't have to pay us. So. She raises a brow at that. And we kind of already you your knees on coral. Well, maybe we can get them into gear as you get your uh, doodads. So, do you want to tell us what we're actually looking for? Or do you want us to just bust into the city and go loot? Like what? We will be what going we north to Saltmarsh. There are many different things that we need there. And we will be claiming them. Hey, okay. well, do you have a specific target? Like, is there someone you're needing us to rescue, or a specific ship or something you need us to bring back? Yes. We had hired a pirate captain to bring us a good deal of rare coral. It would be useful for trading with our soon-to-be allies. But he failed. So we are going to him. I'll be honest, I don't remember the name of the ship. So just pretend well, she what? gave it to you. Yeah. Well, uh, off we go to steal a pirate ship. No, no, we're not stealing the pirate ship. We're stealing what's on the pirate ship and burning the rest of it to the ground. Tasteful. Ah, uh, crossover episode already! Woohoo! <laughs> we'll see. I forgot. Am I am I there with with him? I forgot all, if I was. All of you, all of you were there, kind of watching. Fortunately, no for some there's... reason, the orc is negotiating, and it's going well. Yeah. Uh, also, fortunately, none of them rolled high enough insight check to recognize you, idiots. <laughs> Air for that, the frowns. That, that's part of why I wanted to do the negotiating. You clever boy, taps nose. Clever girl. <laughs> you clever right. son of a bitch. So we have our target. Now there's the matter of payment. You will be paid a good deal of money once. Our goods have been procured. Shall we say... 15 gold for you and each of your party members. Have a deal. Good. And with that, I will simply walk out... on my way to the... well, next mission, I guess. Alright. 
I expect the rest of you to follow me, not to uh, rouse suspicion. Aerith and we're just kind of hanging in the back, and Huff is like, I would have asked for 30. But. <laughs> you <were> doubled it. <laughs> I mean, yes, I probably could have gotten that amount for us. Yes, but here, here's what you're not seeing. I didn't want to have to actually negotiate. No Besides shit. Besides that, making them less likely to accept, it would make them... It would probably make them dislike us a bit more, and I'm hoping to use this as an in to get more information out of them. Slash more... More stuff as, down the line. As the party is talking and approaching their, uh, their inn and their stables, they see that uh, their cart, owned by uh, the good Mr. Uh, Rambledonk, <laughs> is busted. Oh. Broken? Yeah. A lot of his laboratory equipment has been smashed. And as you approach... You can see the gnome's body lying motionless on, like, underneath the cart. I run up and see what's wrong. I, I see if he's still alive. Uh, yeah. as, you, as you reach him, you feel for a pulse to find it. It's weak, but there. Here, I take my health potion. He's still alive. Right. Oh. I was actually going to see if I was actually going to see if Bennett would heal because. He has spell slots, and potions are are consumables. Okay, Arifin at least offered. <laughs> no, 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 Arifin, hold that, and I'll just cast Revivify on him. Uh, oh, he's not dead. Your Revivify hits him. Like, he wasn't dead, but its healing magic does wake him up. <sighs> I'll follow that up with a healing word. <laughs> or cure wounds, excuse me. He coughs up some blood, but he looks to be a little more, a little healthier now. What, what happened? What happened? Cultists. What? <laughs> As he looks up at you, he immediately breaks into tears. They took the eggs! Wait, wait. They took the eggs! He wouldn't have had the eggs. All right, asshole. Where were the eggs? Nora had them in her backpack. They're the size of her torso. No. 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 You would have put them in a cart, dude. They would have been in okay. a chest. Okay. Either way, they would have been hidden. They wouldn't have been. Yes, they would have been hidden. And the cultists still took them anyway. Just, just we kept it as a secret while we travel here. We did. I didn't speak about it openly. I don't know what eggs he's even talking about. Two so. dragon eggs. Two more black dragon eggs. Okay. Bad. Okay. Bad. I may. I may have mentioned it to my friend Violet. I told her not to mess with your dragon eggs because she uses monster parts in her potions. I specifically told her not to touch your dragon babies. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you told someone who you know has a habit of killing monsters for magical stuff about the existence of two monsters that would be great for doing she magical stuff. <laughs> things. I'm... I'm, she goes after mammoths or poisonous snakes, I, not babies. But I, look, look I, I know us orcs aren't usually the bright type, but, like, come on, man. Come on. I'm a lady, thank you. Either come way. on, bruh. Come on. You guys want to find the eggs? Yes. I will cast Locate Object on one of the black dragon eggs. All right. That's interesting. As you cast the spell, you're trying to locate one of the eggs. You it's a thousand foot. You, uh, you detect it. About 15 miles outside of town. Moving quick. How quick? Uh, the uh, speed of a horse and cart quick. I think 
I think I can actually outrun that. What? I have a movement speed of 50. How? What? Oh, I'm sorry. He's a barb... I'm a, He's a barbarian bar with mobile. Yeah, he is. <laughs> ignore the rough terrain. I can catch these guys. Well, a Point the direction. slap your ass. Go for it. I, I proceed to pick up the one with magic, set them on my shoulders, and just bolt. Okay, all of us have magic. You gotta be more specific here. <laughs> the one with the tracking magic we need. So that be Bennett. So I'm just imagining this big burly orc man picking up Bennett like a damsel in distress and fucking booking it out of town. In Hathley. Remy Ratatouille. We just get left in a cloud of cartoon dust. Well, this is interesting. Um, okay, uh, go? I, I, I don't... Do, yeah. I to, do I need to provide you with anything? Then it says we'll all back that. once we've got the eggs. Okay, let's go. As you, as you go rushing out of town... I think we're a little jealous now. They are 15 miles ahead of you, I'm so we gotta so, I'm so quick glad I picked here. that feat. I, I wasn't <laughs> sure whether it would actually be useful or not. <laughs> okay. Hey, kids, it's time to do math. If he's moving at 50 feet per movement round... How long does it take him to run 15 miles? Uh, 100. He, he can dash. I can dash and I ignore rough terrain. Horses don't. So a hun so it's 100 feet per 6 seconds. Yes. Versus 60. Okay. So that's... Holy shit, you that's... actually could catch up to the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, going to. I'm trying to figure out how long it's going to take. Like 30 minutes, an hour... Ten minutes. I'm not good with the math in my head. It's gonna be somewhere around like 25 minutes. It's gonna 30 minutes. Around, it's gonna be around an hour. Around an hour. Yeah. An hour later. Should, and the rest of you will probably catch up a half hour after that. So. Well, if we do, we want to follow them, guys, or do we want to let them handle it? He just stole our medics. I think we should. I thought that we could handle it. Um. Arian for the win. I wasn't even for having these giant eggs. I knew. I said it's gonna be bad news having them around. I know. You eggs. I'll tell you what. While while Tusk and Bennett go on their egg saving adventure. Arifin would ask Nora to help her find another carriage for Rumpledonk, or they can at least get Rumpledonk to a proper medic area yeah. in the city, That's like a pharmacy or something. All right. As y'all well, as y'all do that, an hour later, Tosk and Bennett have managed to catch up to the uh, catch up to the thief. You cross over a small river. Well, a fairly large river, actually. The Desarin River is pretty, is pretty fucking big, yo. But as you cross a massive stone bridge, in the center of the bridge, you see the cart that you're chasing, and you can tell that the eggs are on it. What's the plan? Where we're going, we don't need plans. <laughs> As you, I, let me see. Hold on a second. I've got an idea. How much does a cart actually weigh? Oh no! I'm only carrying fifty pounds, and I count as one size larger because I'm an orc. Let me actually look that up. Well, that's a good question, Mega Man. They stole their eggs, I'm stealing their cart. Cart, 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 cart. Where is cart? Cart, 200 pounds. I can lift that. Wow. I can lift that without being even slightly hindered. So do you want me to stop the horse or the person? I don't know. What... You took me just 
to find the eggs, but I can do a lot of other things. I didn't bolt that bastard. Come on. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to sit. I am going to set him down. I am going to walk over to the cart and proceed to just lift the bastard up. As you walk, as you walk towards the cart, you see the thieves lugging a large chest. There are two of the thieves lugging a large chest. They see you coming, scream something, and promptly throw the chest off the bridge. After whatever they, that was. As they throw... Oh, never mind. Sorry. What were you going to say? No, no, I don't think they threw the eggs off the bridge. I feel like an idiot. Why? I had forgotten one of the spells I had taken. What was that? Fly. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was the panic of losing your babies. Why? It's okay. <laughs> that and Rumple Donk needed attention. So, and if they do that, can I get like really close to them within thirty feet? Oh yeah, you're you're both of you are up on them at this point. All right, I'm just gonna say. You guys deserve this, and I'm gonna channel divinity and just blow them to smithereens with uh, some AOE. Uh, so, uh, what Tosk sees is Bennett yelling something, and then exploding, with as holy <laughs> light erupts from him, and just obliterates the cultists. They are literally turned to ash and bones. Now we can properly look for the dragon eggs. As you climb up into the cart, it is completely empty. Yeah, with the chest over the thing, I'm gonna have to jump down there and get that. How far is the drop? About wow, 300 feet. You think we should uh, go around, or I don't know how deep that water is. As you look down to gauge the distance, you see the chest still falling. And then a draconic shadow swoops under the bridge, splashes out of the water, grabs the chest in its mouth, and sinks back down. As it swims off up the river, you can see a distinct shape of black dragon horns on its face. L looks like we found the mother. Yeah. Probably not a very happy mom either. On the other side, we got a free carriage. And I'd rather not run that whole distance again. So, uh, <laughs> hop in while I talk to the horses. <laughs> yes, while I talk to the horses. You understand you? Oh, my God. Well, Arafin is going to have a lot to talk wait, to you about later. Wait, wait a minute. You mean you can't understand them? <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, wait. He, he is visibly confused. I am very visibly confused as well. We we might have the same look on our face. You uh, know, so you, could you teach you me how to do that? <laughs> so, so I'm I, Later, Bennett is watching, absolutely confuddled, as the orc is speaking horse to the horse, and the horse is responding back. Well, <laughs> Basically, like that. I'm gonna like nice. pray to Helm and be like. Why couldn't you let me do that? <laughs> Phil Helm reaching down to touch your mind. Because Taught I'm not you to blow because, people up. Because, my son, I'm not into bestiality. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And that I'm is kind of unironically why I have that power. Yeah. As, <laughs> as I lift my eyes up, thinking about the romp in the woods with the uh, with the orc. In any case, the horses are now on our side and will be taking us back to town. You so, gotta teach me. He, he, I'll, I'll, I'll try to teach you on the condition you try to teach me how to explode people like that. Well, have you ever heard of Helm? <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever heard of our Lord and Savior Helm? Go on. <laughs> oh, Helm is this god that I that I worship, and he uh, I'm a cleric of Helm. And he kind of just, I didn't learn how to do this. He just kind of let me be able to do it. So for the next hour, uh, the task is proselytized is... to. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at town, you find Violet uh, pretty quickly. She's been drinking in a tavern for, uh, since you arrived in Waterdeep. And she tells you as much. Okay. Yeah, uh, Arafin would have been looking for Violet after Rumpledonk is good, and Violet you know. is her tiefling friend who knows, like, is studied alchemy while um, Arafin was studying spells. Well, you studied well, you study the arcane bullshit. I studied <laughs> the blade. Well, you okay, studied the arcane Violet. bullshit. <laughs> and you said Violet looked pretty sauced. Uh, yeah, she she looks really drunk. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <sighs> Arafin would walk up like she's seen this girl <laughs> party before. Like, all right, come on, Violet, let's get you home. I want to go home. I'm having a good time. I'm sure you did. And she'll look at the bartender and be like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, <laughs> the bartender just kind of shrugs and kind of gestures at a uh, gestures at a fairly sizable uh, tower of silver pieces. Like, oh, boy. Yes, you have a really good time. See? I have not had that much to drink. It's just been really good drink. Mm-hmm. Get sure. And she'll take one of Violet's arms and throw it over her shoulders. Let, let's get you back to your tavern room. Okay. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired Pick and up. I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Violet, dear, did, did you happen to tell the other cultists about those dragon eggs I told you that were off one No, no, shh. Not supposed to talk about the eggs. Right. Yeah. But did you? No, I didn't tell a soul. Joke's on you, I don't have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to the damn joke. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell anybody without a soul? You know, maybe one of the purple cultists that's already sold it to our glorious leader? No, I didn't tell anybody. Okay. Did you, you maybe wait? tell a dog who could have told someone else? I didn't tell anyone. Okay. Nobody knows. Let, let's... Shh. Okay, <laughs> let, let's get you upstairs. I'm, I'm guessing she got a room for the night upstairs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll put her to bed and be like, when you wake up, I've got some really cool ingredients for you to mix up. <gasps> Yay. And she, and she passes out. Yeah, she's gone. Not gonna lie, because you would, uh, because as you know, would you have said Violet is a possible suspect to to Nora? I, I thought she may have been, but if her drunken ramblings are accurate, then no, she didn't tell anybody. I, I want to point out Nora is still with Ramble Long, making sure that he's okay. Because she had yeah. forgotten about fly and the fact that she knows how to cast fly now and yeah. cook. Uh, unless Nora was too much in shock, she would have overheard Tusk and Arafin arguing that why did you tell your friend not to touch dragon eggs? She's clearly part of this cult. 
And it's like, well, she never touches babies. She always goes after adults. Okay, you know, if Nora ever sees Violet, she is going to try and punch her. Or incinerate her. D depending on like how, what mood that. she is Thank in. You. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, what would Astos be doing during all of this? What would Astos and Buttercup be doing? Oh, God. Like... Well, they went to the tavern while, well, like... Sarah's character is upstairs, like, game ready for the night and stuff. Buttercup's gonna be downstairs at the tavern drinking. Like, I can't believe I got myself into this. We just should just destroy those eggs. Would've been better anyways. <laughs> uh... Well... Astos would've tried to fix the cart, but we got a new cart. There's a lot going on, so she's all just gonna drink. Cool. Oh. She'll buy a round for the whole tavern. There's so much going on right now. <laughs> As, as the two of you are enjoying your drinks, you feel a presence behind the two of you, and you, uh, and a, uh, the gnome that you had seen on the road, kind of, kind of sneaky, sneaky one, who had, uh, you had encountered, jumps up next Sneaky to grandma. You. Yeah, something like that. She jumps up next to you in order to drink. Well, now how y'all doing today? Well, I would love to answer that, but I'm currently being preached to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like your friends are getting into a bit of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Right, no worry. It happens. It happens. You know. Ride or die. It happens every now and then. You go out looking for information. Shit gets stolen. And then you have to track down the motherfuckers. That's how it is. You, you seem to know have experience. what's going on. Oh, I was watching the whole time. I've been tracking the six years since you left. Since you got here. You've been tracking us? Oi. Oi. Have we been fun? Entertainment? Well, for me, a little bit. For my boss? Oh, immensely. He's quite <clears> interested <throat> in you lot. Buttercup gets a little worried now about her mom because she went home. She gives like the, the normal weird look. Oh, don't worry about your mom. I t didn't tell him anything about her. I know better than to get between an assassin and her family. And she gives you a wink. I'm deeply intimidated right now. <laughs> yes, by the three foot tall gnome woman. That's tall for a gnome. Let me know when it, or if it can come downstairs. At this point, everyone would be getting, uh, would be getting back together. All right. So who's the lady? And she'll be inferring the gnome lady as Irfan sits down with a tankard of ale. You recognize her? Oh yeah, yeah. She was. She was. Pretty... Yeah, you helped us out with that other bit of trouble. She grins. Tell you what. Look, I recognize that the sixy, six? Six of you are interested in messing with the cult. I'll give you the down low, all right? But you gotta keep it quiet. Can you do that for me? No. <laughs> Most of us can. Side <laughs> eye. I'm not there. No, no, you're here. 
this is yeah, all of us are here. Yeah, this is when everyone gets back. No, Tusk, I, I, I could just tell you a little bit more about Helm. You said you wanted to learn how to blow stuff up. No, please. I very much do. Please oh. continue. And we'll walk away <laughs> while you guys talk. Fair enough. Okay. The ladies <laughs> conspire. One, two, three. Yeah, four ladies. Well, we can keep a secret. You know, I I I will admit Nora is very much I I kind of want to fuck over the cult right now, mm-hmm. like like massively. You haven't even relayed what happened to the dragon eggs yet. Yeah, I I didn't realize we were back yet. Otherwise, I was gonna say yeah, the mom wanted them back, and I ain't fucking with that. Yep. Not not on my not on my own anyway. Like um. Oh, but but on the upside, I got us a new carriage. And some nice. very friendly horses. He says I, but I'm the one that took care of the, the cultists, so. I mean, yes, you did snap your fingers and they exploded. That that was pretty cool. Okay, I so carried Father... you the entire way and then carried the cart for a while. I was also in the cart. Yes. This guy's impressive. I, I actually do like him. Great. As you just see Nora just sort of slam her head on the on the table. Oh. <laughs> where it went, right. or at the direction the thing was going, if you want to go fight a black dragon. I just remembered I could have come with you. Oh, we'll pat, how I'll so? pat Nora on the back. Wait, how so? You don't have wings. I don't need wings to fly. Oh, sweet. That sounds like the name of one of those weird bard songs. <laughs> she knows the spell, you moron. She just forgot the heat of the moment. It's okay. I, I can't use magic, remember? No, we no, just I'm met you. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but good to know. And we'll walk away, and I'll let you guys. And we'll let you guys talk. Come on. Yeah. I literally just tell him everything I know about him. Okay. Time <laughs> to learn about to blow to shit. Channel divinity. Moving on. Yep. Uh, the Gemna, the gnome woman, pulls out a small sigil that looks like a coiled snake with leathery wings. You know what this means? Uh, knowledge religion? Sure, try it. As she, uh, she fingers it as the four of you study it. Oh my. Real bad wording right there. You (laughs) recognize it as a sigil of some kind, but you can't remember what. Arafin would, though. The winged serpent is the symbol of the Zentarim, also known as the Black Network, a massive thieves' guild that expands across all of the Sword Coast. Would I know what that is then? Yes, you would. Ah. Wait, Hawk, just making sure. You're talking about the Zentarim, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. It doesn't give a pronunciation guide. It's Zintarum. That's the Thieves Guild that my rogue is associated with in my game that I play on Sundays. Hey! Yeah, Zintarum and Xanatharth's Guild. Mm-hmm. So, she, uh, she grins as two of you recognize it. Ah. You cheeky buggers have got it in your heads, don't you? You know who I work for. So what are they after? We're interested in stopping the cult as well. To put it simply, there's no profit if everyone, if everyone's gold belongs to one monster. And also, it's hard to steal things from people when they're all dead. In my experience, that makes it way easier, actually. I know, right? Wait. Wait, why am I so cheery? 
She, uh... Except for Grandma, I'm just like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Seb. I'll make you look a deal. The Zentarum are interested in helping you out. Helping to fight the cult. But in order to do so, our boss wants to talk to you first. Ooh. Well, I'm always happy to meet a new face. She kind of gives a wry grin at that. You're gonna regret oh, those. Getting put into that guild. What? <laughs> what? Buttercup, like, it's so hard to get into that guild. Like, right. Years ago. Failed. <laughs> Shame. You'd have probably made a good assassin. Come on. I'll show you how to get in. She leaves the tavern, leading the four of you down winding streets. Alleyways and streets and you know, side passages pass as you finally reach a door in the side of a random building. She takes out her ring, puts it into the center of the door, and turns. And the door unfolds. In its place is a shimmering blackness. And she gestures to the party after you. <laughs> well, I haven't got much left to lose. LZ. Nervin will jump through. Astos, Buttercup. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'll follow everything. Buttercup's gonna look around, take note of like any like thieves can't like mm -hmm. words that may be around and go in. <laughs> All right. And Nora. <laughs> She's hesitant, but she will go in. She's like, wait, I'm the proud mother of six. Could have been eight, but six. Should I go in? What if it's a destruction magic? I don't know. Uh, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> Her mind's just racing right now. You know? Yeah. Her babies were just stolen. I mean, they were actually taken back by their rightful mother. You kidnapping? Actually, <laughs> no. Well, yes, they. Might. And we're not with them, so. Yeah, one we d we don't know if it was the rightful mother, and also they were left in a they were just left in a cave that was being guarded by a roper. I don't they think were... the mother lived there. Because they were anyway, stolen. Continuing. Right. As the four of you step through the portal, you wind up in a massive room. Filled to the brim with shimmering gold. All sorts of shining trinkets and artifacts and art pieces. and It looks like a goddamn dragon's hoard. Perfectly arranged to make the feng shui of the room flow. Nora is so tempted to just move like a and small stack of coins. In the center of it you see a rich mahogany table. Circular. With another smaller nightstand made out of the same material in the center of it. And on top of it is a fish tank. Oh. With a single goldfish in it. Uh, no! No! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! This isn't the Zentarum! This is not the Zentarum! I'm so doing this! Yes. Snack! So tell me more about your god and how I can blow people up. <laughs> As the four ladies are looking up at this fucking goldfish... 
A figure slowly descends from the ceiling, turning to look at them. A massive head with a single baleful eye. As multiple tentacles start sprouting from behind it, each one with its own gleaming eye. A huge toothy maw opens into a grin. Guests! It's been so long since I've had guests! How wonderful! How are you today? I hope the oh, po- I hope the portal dragon. trip I hope the portal trip here wasn't too hard on your stomachs. I've had many guests throw up spontaneously. They were clearly trying to ruin my art. Okay. Hawk, just just making sure you did say you were meaning to say Zentarum, right? Yes. Continue. Continue. <laughs> Arafin is geeking the fuck out. Holy <clears throat> shit, I'm actually reading a beholder. And not just a beholder, the beholder. I've only heard about you in storybooks. Holy cow. Holy dragons. <laughs> you wouldn't have heard about him in storybooks. Nora. Oh, well, his race. Okay, okay, Nate. Out of character. Do you think this is Xanathar? Uh, you, the way you're describing it is Xanathar, yes. And that's the point. Does Nora... You're supposed to think it's Xanathar. Does no, Nora... which is why I haven't acted in character like this. <laughs> then please, start acting in character. I'm sorry, but I am freaking the fuck out. <laughs> Mentally. <laughs> and, and hoping to hell and back that you messed something up. I'm just thankful no. the fish tank, not a fish bowl. That was I'm just, I'm, I just would like to say that I'm glad I have a negative one intelligence. It's but yeah, wow. no, e- either way, uh, Xanathar is not known as a, as a beholder by most. It's only the it's only the higher ups in this guild that know him as a beholder. Okay, character. then let me clarify. Arafin is geeking out that she's meeting a beholder, a, su- a creature that she's only seen in spell books and tomes way back when she was in the cult library. So don't does... they usually kill people? <laughs> anyway. Arif- Xanathar yeah. suddenly floats over to Nora, getting right up in her face, all of his eyes staring at her. You have lots of eyes, like me. Are you trying to take uh, my place? Because I have ten. Maybe eleven. It's been a while since I counted. Anyway. And I only have two. I don't know what you're talking about. All of his eyes narrow. Please don't lie to me. That's not very nice. Astos is going to back away. I believe he's counting your pets. Oh, if you're counting my pets, then yes, I, I have I have five. But if I were counting your pets, you would have seventeen eyes. Are you a dragonborn? Yeah. And he suddenly floats yeah. over to Astos, getting in her face. <laughs> oh, God. Interesting. <laughs> Haven't seen one of your kind in many years. You're very rare around these parts. Did you know that? Where are you from? Why are you here? I actually forgot the name of the town she's from. And then just like I'm... that, he's over in front of Arafin. You! <laughs> Human warlock, you're boring. And then he swoops, uh, he swoops over to Buttercup. <laughs> I know you. I remember you. You tried to become a part of the guild, didn't you? Yes, 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 yes. I remember your real name, too. How naughty using a pseudonym to try and enter the Thieves' Guild. Honor among thieves and all that. Yes, 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 yes. Anyway, would you like some tea? Sure. It's not poisoned. (laughs) 
good to know. <laughs> a couple of servants. I, I, I've got to say, I love this guy. <laughs> I haven't even met him yet, but I love it. Um, yes. A couple of servants bring in large cups of tea oh. and set them on the table for the party to enjoy. Xanathar floats back up to his uh, fish tank and just kind of casually floats around it, orbiting around the goldfish as the party comes over and how many of you are drinking the tea? I'll drink it. Nora is not. Estes will pretend. I was like completely confused of how he knows her, her, her real name because that's something she hasn't gone by since moving to Boulder's Gate or Waterdeep. But is she drinking the tea? No, I was just kind of staring at her trying to figure out how well does she he know this? <laughs> <laughs> as no, as a uh, as Arafin takes a sip of the tea, it's quite good. Uh, chai tea with extra cream and a bit of spice on the top. Very, Ooh. very frothy, very tasty. Uh, Xanathar turns back to the party. So, you're going to be teaming up with the Cult of the Dragon to try and infiltrate their ranks. A clever move. I like that. But it could be even more clever. Not as clever as me! But could be. Yes, 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 yes. What do you think? And he looks at the fish. The fish blows a bubble. My thoughts exactly. Oh, oh I, I wish I was there so I could translate for the fish. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a death sentence. Xanathar has had up to five translators for for his fish. All of them have said something that Xanathar did not like, and he instantly killed them. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. So, you know, that, that is the type of person that Xanathar hole. is. Anyway, <clears throat> so Xanathar turns back to the party. You're going to be infiltrating the, the cult's ranks. That's a good move. Very good move. But you're going up the salt marsh. You need to know what's up there before you actually get there. Knowledge is power, and I am power! Anyway. Indeed. Why aren't you drinking your tea? I'm not thirsty. All of his eyes turn to you. Did I ask if you were thirsty? <laughs> no, but you also didn't ask if I wanted tea. <laughs> well, actually, whole... he did. He just didn't wait for your answer. His whole body turns to you and tilts <laughs> sideways. <laughs> Bring the dragonborn some milk. <clears throat> While we wait for that milk, Xanathar, I did have a question for one so wise and knowledgeable as you. He slowly turns to Arafin. <laughs> Flattery <laughs> will get you everywhere, my dear. Oh, goody. <laughs> She'll take another deep sip of the tea. You said that human warlocks are boring, and that made me really sad, because, well, just between us ladies and well-educated gentlemen, I am no human. But I would presume your magical gaze could have discerned that already. He just grins and kind of nods. And by nodding, I mean his entire body goes up and down. Mm-hmm. So, I do deeply want to know, how do you view my true race? Well, to be quite honest with you, I also find you fairly boring. Ooh, the demon-touched one has made a pact with dark powers! Ugh. Regardless, another servant comes and brings out a large map of Salt Marsh and the surrounding areas. Here's the situation you'll need to know. 
and I want you to pay attention because I don't repeat myself. Did Ex you repeat that? Except to him. And he looks <laughs> lovingly at his fish. I'll repeat anything he wants. But not to you. Now. Uh, Nora, a servant hands you a, uh, like holds out a platter to you full of all sorts of drinks and just kind of gestures at him as if to say, what do you want? Just go for a glass of water. If it's if they're insisting so hard. <laughs> the the uh the servant gives you a look that says, I am so sorry. He's going to give you water from the fish tank, isn't he? No, it's actually pure water. No no no. Water from the fish tank is actually a blessing from Xanathar. Oh. You're assuming he cares enough about you to bless you. I know. I'm not saying he is. I moving was clarifying. On. Yeah, <laughs> moving on. Xanathar grins. Here's what I know, and it's quite a lot. The situation in Saltmart has, Saltmarsh has been unfolding since the Sea Princes were ousted from the area about 30 years ago. 30 years, 2 months, 5 days, and 13 hours as of the next cluck, clucking of the cuckoo clock in the corner. <laughs> Yay! My calculations were correct again. Praise me! Yes, you wonderful thing, you. And the fish, the fish blurbs and pops out another bubble. <laughs> Thank you. That's those claps. Thirty years, two thirty years, two months, five hours, five days, and sixteen hours ago, a group of pirates known as the Sea Princes were ousted from the area around Saltmarsh by a group of adventurers. The exact identity of these adventurers is currently unknown, which is infuriating! But I can't do anything about it yet because it seems to be wrapped up in secrecy, especially how they did it. Regardless, ever since then, one of the Sea Princes has been slowly gaining power on a small island far to the west of Saltmarsh. And they have... Uh, this, this, this Sea Prince was once... Well, is a Sahagan. He has been raising a Sahagan army in order to try and reconquer what was once his. An admirable goal, and one that I would probably do myself, but the point is... He's gonna do it again. And he has the help of the cult. A black dragon named Raxaldanar has been assisting them, granting them the money and resources they need to actually perform this conquest. If you're going to be intercept in, in, in <laughs> if you're going to be infiltrating the cult, you're going to be going up to Saltmarsh not to try and take back just all of the coral from that smuggler that they so hate, but also you're going to be delivering that coral to the Sahagan, who are going to use it to start building more armor and weapons and eventually attack the city in its entirety. So, any questions so far? No, you explained it all quite beautifully. Thank you. Well, good. No more questions. I'm glad. Fortunately for you, there's already a small group of adventurers up there who have been making a name for themselves. I actually really like them. They're very interesting to watch. I've been scrying on them every now and then just to see them go. <laughs> but you're going to need to make contact with them as soon as you get up there. With their help, you should be able to mount an offense against the island to the west. From there... Fuck, I don't know. You'll figure it out. You're smart kids. I like you. Thank you. 
I like you because you're interesting. He looks at Nora. I like you because you flatter me, and that's very nice. He <laughs> says to Arafin. And he looks at Buttercup. So I like you because you're sneaky. Thank you. Then he turns to Astos. You haven't drunk your tea yet. And I'll take a fake sip. <laughs> he stares, eyes twitching. Dead in the eyes. <laughs> Good. Pinky up. Any other questions? I'm glad there are no other questions because I have one request of you. I have given you all of this information and I know that it will prove useful. But once you've completed this task for me, I need something from that island, from that keep. Inside the Sahagan's base, the Sea Prince's fortress, the big island fort castle. There is a Bident, an ancient artifact once owned by an ancestor of the current Sea Prince. I want it. And after you've killed them, you're going to bring it to me. I see nothing wrong with that. Does anyone else have a complaint or a comment? It's like we're definitely going to Salt Marsh now. Oh, indeed. It'll be a most wondrous adventure for us to meet up with this other party of wonderful pirates that he mentioned and we can get the Biden and possibly join the guild eventually and all like so all you want is the Biden yes all I want is the Biden and if we cannot locate it you, 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 you can locate it it's there and he can all scry right. so he'll know if we're lying <laughs> Maybe don't try to jip the beholder on an artifact you probably couldn't make use of anyway. <laughs> Just, you know. This is all sounding like the great... Orc like, thoughts. This is all sounding like great setup for an awesome crossover episode. Woo! Anyway. Xanathar... Who's up for a crossover? Xanathar <laughs> goes back to orbiting the, his fish. And just watching the fish go. Completely ignoring the party. And finally, finally he turns back to you. Oh, we're done. Bye. Oh, okay. Thank you. No. As we all get dropped through secret trap doors that teleport us back outside. No. Thank you. Goodbye! One of his eyes blinks and flashes, and suddenly all four of you fall through fall. trap doors as you fall into the same shimmering black portals and you land on your asses outside. About a mile away from where you started. As you get up, dust yourselves off, and start looking around, you exit the little alleyway you landed in and realize that you are, like, half a block away from your tavern. <clears throat> Guess you can call him uh, farsighted. <laughs> Talk about poor depth perception. Well, still, now we have our two quests. We get the coral, we get paid. If we get the Bident, we earn the favor of and good graces of a master beholder, and maybe Buttercup can get into this guild. 
this wasn't the one I wanted to get into. Oh. Well, which one did you want to get into? Bad things about the guild master with the goldfish. <laughs> I thought he was quite lovely. Things are supposed to And with that, I believe we are going to call it here for the evening. That was fun. That was great. Yeah. I quote that. Especially the part where you, you all realize I can outrun a horse. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Wait, he could do what? <laughs> all right. I'm, yes. I'm by, do... by me arbitrarily picking one single feat, I was able to almost save the day. Almost. I am going to cut the recording here, y'all. Good night, YouTube. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Tyranny of Dragons. My name is Hawk, and I've been your GM for today. Our players today were Sarah, playing Arafin, the human warlock. Nate, playing Nora Mog, the dragonborn sorcerer. Morgan, playing Astos, the dragonborn barbarian. Mist, playing Buttercup, the halfling rogue. And Fish, playing Bennett, the human cleric. Character art used belongs to Atlas, Sim Studio, Yama Orche on DeviantArt, and Morgan and Nate, who drew their own. Tyranny of Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons, and all associated properties are copyright Wizards of the Coast. This has been a Prism Blade gaming production. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing, and please share this video with your friends. We stream this campaign on a bi-weekly basis over at twitch.tv slash prismbladegaming. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Hawk Johansson, to keep up to date with other streams and videos we'll be working on. Again, thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time.